Hello, so uh, this brief, uh, very brief lecture is going to be about views and uh, condition testing. So let's start. So views in um, SQL, so a view is basically like a virtual table. So just the same way that we can send queries to our tables, like we can join tables and this and that, we can create virtual tables. Uh, and then we can use those virtual tables in our queries. So essentially the uh, objective is to create a subset of the existing physical tables that are on the database, like residing on the uh, database management system and create a subset of those so it's easier in terms of query handling and so on. Okay. So query itself is created by, uh, sorry, a view itself is created by a query also, and then that can be used in queries just like tables. Syntax of creating a view is something like this, like create view, you give it a name, as, and then you have a whole query here. That will go query the physical system, physical tables, and create a subset of those uh, uh, physical systems as a virtual table. So view you can think of at, as a virtual table. So contents of a view are computed when it is uh, used within a SQL statement. Okay. Uh, And, and uh, I will explain this like through an example. I think that's better. So let's say we have to, uh, uh, we are going to create a view. So we say create view and we name it customer last name. Then you say as and after as you have a whole query. What's happening in that query? You're selecting the customer last name from the customer's table and you have ordered that by descending last names. Okay, uh, so what happens is like in MySQL, uh, under the database, you will have your tables and then after you create a view, uh, under those uh, views, that specific view will be created. If you see what's inside the view, it's basically this query that you ran up here. So that makes up that view. So that is just treated as a uh, virtual table. So instead of a table existing in this column, uh, sorry, in, in under this uh, sub item, views have their own sub item because this, this table like cust, uh, customer last name, this is not an actual table, but a virtual one that you can use in your queries just as you could have used a table, a normal table. Okay, so when you say select all from this view name, it will give you that uh, tables contents or whatever is in that uh, virtual table or view. Okay, another example. So what's happening here, we are creating another view called product category, which is this. And in this view, what do we have? Now we have two uh, attributes. One is the category description, the other is max of retail price based on whatever query we have down here. Okay, so as a result of this query, we have these two columns created inside this view. Okay, when you see the contents of that view, just like you say select all from a table, you can just say the same thing select all from this virtual table or view called product category and it will give you the contents of whatever is in that view, which essentially is this query running, okay? Yet another example. Uh, so this is our schema that we saw in last class. Here we are saying that we are creating a view of these things. What are these things? We are going to get some information out of the transcript table based on these, uh, uh, what do you say, conditions that you will have. In that view, you will have two attributes. One is the average grade and the student's ID. 
and that's it okay uh, then so the color coded it's shown that you can use a view with a any other table as well you can join them uh, you can uh, do like union operators accept uh, uh, minus whatever okay so this view is treated just like any other table right so that's what this query down here is saying that now you can select the student's name and the uh, cumulative GPA from this table that we defined up here as a view and this table which is a student and then the where condition okay why do we have views like for performance and convenience so the uh, and security basically so users are essentially not granted access to those base tables or like the database tables the physical tables that is so we call them base tables so instead what they're granted is they're granted an access to the view of a database that is appropriate only for their needs okay so users in essence do not need to see the full complexity of the database so view basically creates an illusion of a simpler database that is customized to the needs of a particular category of users or uh, based on their uh, requirements okay so you can think of a view as a similar in a way to like a function or a subroutine that's in standard programming languages so you can use a view multiple times right so, so you can call a function multiple times similarly if you create a view one time you can just uh, use it again and again meaning uh, that you don't have to repeat a single query every time okay so that's an advantage in terms of performance and convenience as well now the question may arise why don't we go ahead and create a physical table instead right so if you remember normalization so that will be a redundant table you don't want to physically create tables in terms of interest of space and again performance wise you don't need those extra tables but it may be helpful if you can have a virtual table riding over that uh, base table example is uh, like in universities we have uh, uh, like our databases are connected with each other like students grades uh, professors can see uh, an input students can only see uh, student information like uh, financial information etc professors cannot see uh, other information like your uh, grades uh, uh, and your transcripts like those are available to to professors uh, but essentially what un underneath there are the same base tables it is one big database out of which we have been given uh, views or uh, uh, like views are created on top of that so each individual type of user can only access that types of information. Now that said security itself uh, is not the primary thing like uh, 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 what should I say like external schema is basically uh, composed of views like what's what's exposed to the outside person or the world so views can allow like uh, owners to provide select access to a subset of columns but like I said earlier views alone do not provide security you have other like uh, access control mechanisms and like privileges grants etc that are available in the databases or the database management system only saying that uh, like for data hiding and com uh, hiding the complexity it will provide better security yes but it's only a minute part okay in terms of database security that is and then you can see like these examples uh, so this is just like the same thing that I was uh, telling you uh, in the previous slide that uh, like a part of a transcript you can expose only certain columns so uh, people can come and see like when I say people it's like students or 
professors can come see and only see part of a student's transcript, not everything. Okay. But this alone is not enough. You usually have these types of uh, privileges, like uh, you can grant access to specific users on this view and so on, right? So selects, uh, grant select, grant update, grant delete. So these are types of permissions that you can assign in databases. Since this is an introductory level course and, and we're not going to go in the security of databases as such. So just to let you know that the, there are security mechanisms out there uh, and a view creation of a view alone is not enough. Okay, you have to have some kind of privileges, etc. assigned in addition. Okay. Then, okay, you can create view with a create view statement. How about to delete it? Right? If you need to delete a view, you don't no longer need it. What needs to be done? So the statement is you just drop view and give the name. And then that view is gone from the uh, uh, views uh, subsection. So for instance, here we dropped that product category that we created before and now it's gone. Okay. Similarly, just as you can modify tables, you can um, modify views as well. However, views, not every view can be modified. Why? Um, because, you know, if you... Uh, if you think of a view, view is just a query, right? So you just accessed some parts of, let's say, five or six databases. You created a view on top of that. Now, can you modify the data only inside the view? Maybe not because if you remember our um, integrity constraints and all those things from like the initial lectures, so changing something or modifying some part of a data in a uh, like... Um, uh, in a view may not correctly reflect to the underlying base tables. Okay. Uh, so yes, some views can be modified, but not all of them. How do you modify them? Uh, the same way you can modify tables like update on, uh, delete from, insert into and so on. Okay. So example is, is this view an updatable one? So what does this view involve? It involves only one attribute of the customer table. Okay. So yes, um, you can. Why? Because it's a simple query select from and so on. There is no multiple tables. So only one table is involved. Yes, you can go and add information in, in this table, maybe. If the group view has grouping and having condition, etc., uh, then it may not be updatable. However, however, if you read this red part, you usually do not make these updates in views. Okay, so it is better not to treat a view as a physical table or base table, meaning that yes, views are uh, helpful, beneficial, if you are retrieving information. To insert or update information, always go back to the base tables, okay? Why? Because there are more chances of messing up your data, corrupting your database, if you're doing it through a view, because all the integrity constraints may not be uh, checked or may not even be uh, checkable. So it's saying the same thing. Uh, yes, a view can be updated, but not always, like I said earlier. Uh, here is an example. So this is our view that we created. And now inside this view, we're gonna insert these values. So what is the view made up of? So go to the transcript table, get these three attributes, and wherever the course code is like this, and semester was this, put them in this CS reg uh, view. Okay. Now we are saying that insert in the CS reg these three values that we extracted from the base table. Values are this, right? 
So the question is what value should be placed in the attributes of the underlying table that have been projected out. So if you go and look at the schema in the previous slides, uh, I think slide six. Um, so what's our, uh, so we are looking at the transcript table. So transcript table, we only in the view, we projected student ID, course code and semester. We did not talk about the grade. Okay. Or it's not part of our uh, view, right? So what should, if you insert this record, what goes in grade, right? So that is a basic question. Now the thing is, by default, if that column allows null, remember when you created the databases, it says uh, allow it's nullable or not, meaning that if, if a specific attribute can have nulls in it, if that attribute allows nulls, yes, this query, uh, this query can uh, go through. Why? Because you can uh, put these three values on those three attributes and then the fourth grade attribute, null will be gone or put in there by default. Now, if grade is not accepting nulls, then this query will not go through. Then it will say, oh, integrity constraints problem and so on. Why? Because it needs a value for grade. So this is like a basic example where uh, I just showed you that not every view can be updated, okay? Then some advantages of views, like I said, you can read through these pretty self-explanatory. They use less storage space, customized view for the user, um, physical data independence, so on. But there are some disadvantages as well. Um, so it uses some processing time each time the view is referenced. Why? Because if you remember, uh, view is just a query that is run every time on the base tables. So if you have some base tables, you are accessing a view, the view is created at runtime, the query is answered at runtime, and you can go and um, then use that view. And the second point I already said, they may or may not be directly updatable. Okay, so that is all about views. Finally, like the next two slides, we're going to talk about uh, like briefly uh, uh, conditions or conditional expressions uh, or condition testing is it's called. So the thing is like by default, like SQL does not have any programming constructs. If you guys have taken Python on R, you know, there are like loops or conditions and so on things in programming languages, right? So these conditionals that we even have in Excel of if else type are useful um, for some programming uh, aspects, right? So unlike a procedural programming language, SQL does not have these if else statements. So that's why in the initial uh, versions of SQL, such things are missing, but then they, in uh, introduce like the standards body introduce something called a case keyword okay so case was basically identified to accommodate this type of need what's the need to write if else statements so the case has basically four syntaxes that when uh, like case of some expression when this condition is true then do this if this then this and so on so there are four basic cases uh, that can be handled by a case. So this is a, called a case form. So the case form can be constructed using either an expression that equates to a value or it can be a predicate. So the predicate form is basically based on um, like a true, false or don't know kind of logic, like a three, three pronged logic that whether it's some, the predicate is true, it's false or you don't know about it, right? but it allows of like uh, for more complex types of operations. So the value expression form requires uh, a match. Um, 
so the first two forms are null if and coalesce so these are basically the keywords associated with the two forms of the case expression okay so example is you say select case when now this expression then go to product description else write this thing okay and then end uh, this as product description in or from this table okay so that's what's happening here okay it goes when the product line is one that attribute is one uh, it writes that else uh, it writes uh, this uh, what do you call uh, the hash sign okay <clears throat> so similar to an if else statement or if this condition then do this uh, allows you to set return values based on the conditions that you want to check so case attribute name when you can check a value then do this when this value do this else do this okay so select these three attributes and case is uh, when employee state is wa write a yes else write a no in this column or as create a new column called this so in here we are showing the state and then showing this thing these three attributes are shown because it's they are in the outer select but what if we don't want to show this emp state column right and we only have this column So we can say is uh, or we can ask a question is Kirk DeGrasse uh, from uh, Washington right if we don't project out this column then we can just say no we don't have to show that he's from Texas right we can just answer a yes or no question so in these types of problems where you don't want to expose all of your data but still want to answer questions that's where condition testing can provide uh, prove uh, useful okay in terms of assignments uh, etc I don't think I'll I'll go into the details of conditional testing views yes maybe but condition testing most likely not okay because it's a little advanced so that is all for this lecture